and friends. Uh, today we are going to discuss the common knee cases that you, you may get in your exams. So this is Dr. Ashish Taneja, this is Dr. Basin. So we'll go through the common knee cases that you might get in your exams, starting with ACL tear. So uh, I would first start with the common presentation of an ACL tear, sir. Uh, most of the ACL tears come present with a history of injury. And following that history of injury, the patient had to discontinue what he was doing. Like if he was playing sports, he would have to leave that particular game immediately after that if he has torn an ACL very acutely. You would see a pain and the patient will have swelling occurring within four hours of injury. This usually is due to the fact that ACL is a vascular structure. So if there is a damage to the ACL, the bleeding occurs and the knee swells up. So this is an hemarthrosis occurring within four hours. Other reasons for getting hemarthrosis in acute injury is osteochondral fracture or a patellar dislocation with an osteochondral fracture. So these are the reasons for getting hemarthrosis with injury, ACL being the commonest one. Another thing which patients with ACL will always complain is that the first time they hurt their knee, they heard a pop sound, which is usually due to breakage of a torn ACL. Another feature which they have is that once they fell down, they tried to get up, but they could not get up and they tried, felt that they would fall down again. This is the feeling of instability. That means that patient is not able to bear weight the moment he tries to bear weight, the knee tends to move out and he tends to fall down. These are the common presentations of a patient with ACL tear in the acute stage. Sir, so is there any difference between a feeling of give way or instability? Yes, it is important to distinguish the two. A patient uh, who has a locking of a meniscus gets acute pain and the body reflexly inhibits the quadriceps in order to prevent the knee from extending and getting the knee locked. So because of reflex inhibition of quadriceps due to pain of a meniscus, the knee just falls down. The patient gets a feeling of falling down. But in an ACL tear, the patient feels that my knee has moved out of place. That is a instability. So giving way is due to reflex quadricep inhibition uh, in a painful locking in the knee. So a patient of ACL tear can have both instability from ACL tear and a feeling of give way because of an associated meniscal tear. So now moving forward, uh, we would go ahead and discuss about the meniscal, the mechanism of uh, injury. So going further, we would like to discuss the mechanism of injury of these uh, ACL tears. Uh, one can have most of the injuries which in ACLs are due to motorcycle accidents or due to pivoting action in sports. Uh, most of the time ACL is one of the identifiable ligament which is injured. But there are other ligaments which also might be injured like a medial collateral ligament. Uh, in a pivoting injury, the uh, knee goes into a rotation if the foot is fixed. So if you jump from a height uh, and the foot gets fixed and the thigh rotates, then also one can get a, a rotational injury to the ACL. So in this pivoting uh, mechanism, the thigh is internal rotated and the tibia gets relatively external rotation as compared to femur. With a valgus force on the knee, this causes the uh, ACL tear. This is also common in other uh, sports injuries, especially in footballers who get non-contact uh, injuries uh, like this. So, uh, going further, what are the signs uh, that we should look for in a case of ACL tear? Uh, first is the hemarthrosis, which we can make out by a patellar tap. Uh, then one can do a Lachman test 
uh, and derer drawage test and a pivot shift test. Basically, we are trying to elicit increased anterior mobility of the tibia relative to the femur. Uh, one of the oldest and commonest tests done is an anterior draw test. This test is done with the hip flexed about 45 degree and knee flexed 90 degree. The doctor examining sits on the foot end uh, on the, uh, of the patient and the leg is normally in about 15 degrees of external rotation, the way it normally is. Uh, it is important to make sure before you do an uh, anterior stress on the tibia to make sure that the tibia is not posteriorly subluxed which occurs in a PCL tear. If there is a PCL tear and the tibia is posteriorly subluxed and one puts an anterior stress on the upper calf posteriorly, one may get a feeling that there is an increased anterior translation of tibia. But actually this is reducing the tibia back to its normal position. So one must be aware that the tibia is not posteriorly subluxed. Uh, if the tibia is not posteriorly subluxed, putting an anterior stress on the upper calf at the same time making sure that the hamstrings are relaxed, one will see increased anterior translation as compared to the opposite side. One can get a firm or a, a firm endpoint or a soft endpoint when one puts an anterior strain on the upper tibia. If there is a firm endpoint, either the ligament is partially torn or there is an associated avulsion which is of the anterior tibial spine which is blocking full anterior translation. If there is a firm, a soft endpoint, that means the ligament is totally broken and the, you can keep on subluxating the tibia anteriorly. This is as far as the anterior draw test is concerned. Uh, the Lachman test should be both slight. Yeah. So we will discuss each test in detail. So starting with Lachman test. Okay. Uh, this is a very sensitive test for detecting a torn ACL. Okay. The, the knee is kept in 30 degrees of flexion. One hand of the examiner grasps the lower thigh and feels for the relaxation of the hamstring. The other hand grasps the upper calf and the thumb is kept on the medial tibial plate. One puts a stress anteriorly on the hand holding the calf and sees for relative motion from the femur. If there is an increased relative motion, one can say that this is a positive Lachman test. Less than 5 mm increase in anterior mobility as compared to opposite side is grade 1 Lachman. Between 5 to 10 mm increased mobility as compared to the opposite side is grade 2. And if there is more than 15 degree, 15 millimeters of increased anterior translation of upper tibia as compared to the femur, then it is grade 3 Lachman positive. One of the most sensitive tests for an ACL rupture is the Lachman test and it is quite comfortable and easy to perform. The knee is flexed about 30 degrees. The examiner holds the thigh with one hand and feels that the hamstrings are relaxed. One can tell the patient to relax his knee so that the hamstrings can be felt to be relaxed. The other hand holds the upper calf from behind and the thumb is on the upper medial tibial plateau. So one does is put a stress on the calf holding the upper tibia and sees for increased anterior translation. If there is a firm endpoint with increased translation, it indicates probably a partial tear or there is an avulsion of the anterior tibial spine which is giving a firm endpoint. If there is no endpoint or a soft endpoint, that means that the ACL is completely torn.
one can grade the lag pen by the amount of anterior translation of the tibia. If there is increase of up to 5 mm as compared to the opposite side, that's a grade 1 lag pen test. Between 5 to 10 mm increased translation of the upper tibia as compared to the opposite side is grade 2 and more than 10 mm is a grade 3 lag pen test.